It's okay to look back just for a hot second, but we will be doing some of that today. Paul Lyhander with you on this Monday morning. It is a total eclipse of the heart day. Instagram Hill is here on the ones and twos after a very long weekend in which the theme could have been finish your story. But as we know, not all stories come with truly, truly satisfying endings. And that was kind of how it worked out for the state men and certainly for the state women, although they do get some consolation in what happened yesterday in the Women's Basketball National Championship. Good morning once again, everybody. Is it a good morning? Yeah, I suppose so. There's a saying that's, there's some sayings out there that come along uh, with what happened over the weekend, and we'll dig into that in a little bit uh, today. But the focus is now on how to move forward after a weekend that state fans had to endure, where there were lots of gatherings at home and in public and certainly in Phoenix and Cleveland that did not go the way they wanted them to go. Let's start with the state women very quickly here, where, again, we have wrapped up the national championship. It is undeniable that you have seen South Carolina finished its story undefeated 38-0 and by knocking off the Iowa Hawkeyes 87-75. to That was a game you heard on News Plus. 96.5 FM and 99.3 FM yesterday. South Carolina, the team that knocked the NC State women out fairly handily with a third quarter. Matter of fact, both, both uh, if you, they divided the men's game into quarters, it would have been the third quarter for the NC State men as well, where we saw kind of things just not go right. It started that way for the women that way on Friday night, South Carolina and State. Head coach Westmore talked about how tough it is to take on South Carolina, and certainly Iowa had to face that same challenge on Sunday. Uh, just like I said, just to be able to have such an inside-outside game. Uh, you know, there was times, you know, we were trying to maybe double from the weak side on Cordoza or, you know, maybe dig from the ball side and try to get it out of there. But uh, if she, she buries you so deep that you know, even Dublin's hard to do. Camila Cardoso, who was named the Final Four's most outstanding player, having a double-doubled in the game against Iowa, was a woman who was not going to let anyone lose. She declared for the professional WNBA draft prior to the Final Four and backed it all up with South Carolina, where they were able to write off NC State women's magical run into the Final Four. You get the banner, there's no doubt about it. But again, the consolation comes into the fact that you lost to the eventual national champions. On to the men. The men, unfortunately, again, the story does not end the way you want it to, the way anybody wanted it to. And for those of you who were using all the bonus bets leading up until this weekend, me, 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 me included in that big, uh, in that big uh, gathering of people, yeah, wasn't quite the way we wanted it to go. Uh, overall, uh, 63-50 against Purdue. Certainly not for the 2GJ set that took the floor all season long for State during this nine-game win streak. Streaks do come to an end, unfortunately, for DJ Horn. He says it hurts. A lot of emotions going on right now. Um, obviously, you know, I wish we would have won it. Um, but just to know, you know, we got this close, it, it definitely hurts. Especially when, you know, there was multiple chances in the game where... Um, we pulled it in close, could have gone on a run, and just couldn't quite get over the hump, so uh, it definitely hurts. DJ Horn tried, Graham. I mean, he, he tried. He was hitting floaters. He was pull, hitting up pull-up threes. But it felt like kind of like Isaiah James in the women's game on Saturday. Uh, Purdue had someone sticking to Horn as much as they possibly could. And then, you know, DJ Burns just couldn't get uncorked in that one, picking up those early fouls. Yeah, it felt like it was going to be midway through that second half. It felt like DJ Horn was going to do everything he could to uh, get NC State back into it. But it just felt like for every punch that NC State tried to get Purdue, Purdue immediately responded with another counter punch. Again, putting together a 12-1 to run, as you mentioned, and what would be if they split it up into quarters, probably the third quarter of that men's basketball game, Purdue was able to just kind of close it out with that run, and NC State really never had an answer after that. I had butt planted on couch on Saturday watching this basketball game, and as I'm as I'm watching it, and I saw an Adam Gold tweet, and he and I were thinking alike, like full Corsican brothers kind of thing moment, where he was like, Purdue was trying to give State a chance to stay in this game and hang out in this game. The oh, reason, no, they definitely did. Yeah, the, 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 over, the backcourt violations and things like that, that's what happens just with inexperience at the level, depth perception and whatnot. You're playing in a football stadium. But they kept throwing those, like, across-the-key lobs 
Yeah. Like trying to hook up with Edie. And I'm like, it just, they kept throwing it. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Just back him down to the low post and just let the guy cook. Just let him cook. Instead, they're trying to like do fancy bounce passes and trying to do, again, uh, transition lobs, which Purdue, it may have worked against other teams, but clearly wasn't working against State. State just couldn't get the daggers that they needed to kind of stay stay really in this one as that second half rolled. As you mentioned with some of the mistakes Purdue made, I, I think another thing that hurts State, I, I think that's early in the game where Purdue had four turnovers on, the, on their last six previous possessions. I don't think NC State came away with any points off those turnovers. Like Moments like that is where I felt like State kind of dug themselves their own grave as far as just not being able to take advantage of the bowler makers' mistakes. Yeah, the turnovers clearly Purdue was Purdue was not taking care of the ball very well, and they'll have to do so again. They'll have to do so tonight against UConn. Uh, let's talk a little bit more from uh, your state your state folks because the DJs are both leaving. This is it. This was their swan song. Let's talk about DJ Burns and join the run. Man, just to be a part of this has been everything I could have asked for, man. Um, didn't go the way we wanted to go out, but, man, this has been an experience like no other. It's something, you know, that I've wanted my whole life, and to be able to do it with the group of people that we have is just amazing, man. And um, the city, we're just glad we could bring the culture back to Raleigh and um, bring it back for state fans, man. They've been waiting for a long time, and I hope we give them something to, you know, build up for next year. There was an article I read, Graham, about Derek Wittenberg, right? Yeah. Remember this 83 team? He was actually here in the in the building uh, at the end of last week uh, talking with folks, and he mentioned he was kind of getting tired of talking about 83. Yeah. Right. The, the generational part of 83 and the throwbacks and the callbacks uh, to that team, and this team allowed them to move forward a little bit. Yeah. It, you know, it wasn't a championship. Don't get me wrong, but it was a Final Four trip and a Final Four appearance. And, again, for those of you who road tripped out there, that's going to be a long road trip back. Those of you who flew out there and, and having been in Phoenix for a Final Four, I know what kind of craziness it is when you try to travel back and forth. But you get to talk about the run. You get to talk about the ride that this team took you on over the past three weeks. Like, amazingly enough, and uh, for Derek Wittenberg to come out and say, you know what, I'm just – I'm." I'm done with 83. Can we find something new to latch themselves on, latch ourselves onto as a fan base? It's very clear that 2024 captured some magic to where you're going to go back and look at the three weeks that happened, and you were like, damn, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, you certainly still engrave your name in Wolfpack history. You get a banner. It would have been nice to have two, but it kind of, as you mentioned, uh, I've said it too, going into this run and when they started to pick up steam i would always ask the question does it feel like 83 well now it feels like you kind of close a chapter in the book of nc state basketball history with this new team that was able to well overachieve let's just go ahead and say that they well overachieved this season and through all the highs and the lows um it certainly doesn't end the way you want it to but you can certainly say that the season went the best way it could have possibly been. It could have possibly gone after losing four straight to close out that regular season, the ACC. The, 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 the great part about it is is that you have a Final Four t-shirt, right? You, have, you, have, you, have, you went out and bought it. You went out and got it. You've ordered it or whatever it is. It's, it's never going to be dated. A Final Four hat, banner, poster, whatever it is that you picked up as a Wolfpack fan or as a college basketball fan, that lives. That will live forever. There are three hundred and twenty plus other teams who had to sit and watch you play that game. They had to sit and watch you play the last nine games. Overall, <laughs> you you whittle down and whittle down and whittle down and whittle down. And think about that part of things. Fan bases don't get to have this every year. There are a couple here in the triangle who have been getting used to it. There's no doubt about that. But as you dig into what it truly means. And I'm not saying, and I was going to save this for a hot second, but I'm going to dig into it here. It's not about smiling because it happened, right? Because there's a possibility that could, it run back again, and we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. But it's smile because you were able to enjoy it while it happened. Yeah. Not just because it happened. Stuff happens. I almost cursed. Stuff, stuff happens, right? Stuff happens in your life. The, you get two candy bars out of the machine, right? You put in a couple quarters, like, oh, my God, I got two Snickers. That's, that's awesome. You got to enjoy that, not just because it happened. Stuff 
happens in your life. You find a penny, you pick up a penny, someone buys you coffee at lunch when you don't think about it, you get a hug from your kids or whatever because they just wanted to give you a hug, not because it was your birthday, not because it was uh, the anniversary of something or whatever, it's just because they wanted to give you a hug. Like, not just because it happened, because you enjoyed it. And you get to be in the national spotlight for well over a month. Some of that I feel like NC State fans have desperately been wanting when you talk about the other teams here in the triangle getting used to being in these Final Four appearances. And NC State got to enjoy the high of that for a little bit. You enjoy the rally cries of ice cream, right? Right. I mean, who's not going to remember ice cream at this point? You're going to line them up. You're going to go get your cones. You're going to go make that happen. You're going to love the idea that you got to take a photo or you caught a glimpse or you heard DJ Burns speak about something and waxed poetically and did it with joy. And that's the one thing about this kind of event, not just because it happened, because you got to enjoy it. And when he just talked about it, he talked about enjoying the run that his team went on and how he wanted to be a part of that. Be happy for him. Be happy for DJ Burns. We will get to that in just a moment. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 999 The Fan. The Purdue Boilermakers defeated NC State 63-50 to in, in, in the first Final Four game of the NCAA Tournament in Phoenix on Saturday. Advancing to tonight's national championship game, the Boilermakers went on a 12-1 run over five minutes in the second half, which gave Purdue its largest lead of the night and ultimately sealed the Wolfpack's fate. After defeating NC State 78-59 to in the first Final Four game of the women's NCAA Tournament in Cleveland on Friday, Dawn Staley and South Carolina completed their perfect season, ending Caitlin Clark's historic college career with an 87-75 win over Iowa in the NCAA Championship game. Freddie Anderson made 23 saves for his third shutout in his past seven games, and the Carolina Hurricanes scored two first-period goals in their regular season home finale to beat Columbus Blue Jackets 3-0 yesterday. Find these stories and more on WROSportsFan.com. Next up here on 99.9 The Fan, the state men have pulled off something that has only been done in NC State history four other times. That has reached the Final Four. Last time in 1983, we all know this, 1974. Prior to that, they won the championship in 74 and 83. 1950, that is it. But let's put this into perspective just a little bit. All right, can we do this? Final Four, that's one appearance, right? In the last decade, that is one Final Four appearance. In the last decade, 2014 to 2024, one Final Four appearance. Graham, how many does Duke have? A good amount. Two. I can't. <laughs> they have two, two Final Four appearances. So this is where I'm going with this. They have two Final Four appearances in the last decade. How about Carolina? How many Final Four appearances do they have in the last decade? Last 10 years. Uh, I'm not trying to stump 2000, you. 2009, 2017. No, last decade, 10 years. Last 10 years. Four. Correct. Well, yeah, since 09-4. They have three in the last decade. Okay. So Carolina, since 2014, has three Final Four appearances. Duke has two. The Wolfpack now have one. So does it take a repeat for them to be considered an elite team anymore when you start comparing Duke and Carolina? Is it unfair to exclude the Wolfpack from that conversation moving forward? They have one. Duke only has one more. And Carolina only has two more. Now, with those... Granted, Duke has a national championship. Carolina has a national championship. That I understand. And runner-ups are runner-ups as well. But a Final Four appearance, as we just talked about, and I'm not going to devalue the Final Four, cha- Final Four, you reach the Final Four. Carolina has three, Duke has two, Wolfpack has one. So does State need to run it back one more time to be considered part of what Some of the old-timers or old-schoolers go, well, this is a triple-triangle rivalry, right? It shouldn't just be about Duke and Carolina. I would argue because of this appearance, yes. But do they need to repeat it to make it happen? This is back-to-back tournament appearances now for the Wolfpack, 23 and 24. So it's not like it's unheard of. The transfer portal has changed a lot of things, and Kevin Keats has become the guy who understands the portal the best. Seven guys, right? 
Seven guys. And if you speak to and if you read everything and research everything right now, it feels like everybody's reaching out to state as opposed to state having to reach out to people. Kevin Keats, following the loss on Saturday, says he hopes state gets more attention now. I hope people understand that we have a heck of a, a basketball program and um, we, we play a unique style and we've got a great culture. You know, what's not talked about enough is – and we've had five teams in the last couple of years get in the tournament. We're one that's been two years in a row. Like, it's almost forgotten because we didn't have, we didn't make a run last year. But this is back-to-back NCAA tournaments where our league is so good and we're not getting the respect that we deserve. So in two years where we've got five, we've been one of the five a couple of years. So he tips his hat to the ACC there, by the way. Yeah. Kevin Keats doing that. He gets it. Shameless I under- plug. I, I understand it. And I understand, Paul, oh, my God, what are you talking about? Duke's got these recruiting classes. Carolina's Carolina. Those teams have undergone coaching changes, right? I mean, recent coaching changes. And with those coaching changes, truly has come success. The portal has kind of leveled the playing field just enough. And if there's a guy that coaches around this country should be picking up the phone and calling right now, if he wasn't on their speed dial before the Final Four, it should be now. It's Kevin Keats. Because well, he seems to have figured it out, Graham. Yeah, I was going to make the point that in the latest episode of Pat Therapy, and Tim Dolly and I will have one last episode today as we just recap the season overall. I've been saying in a in a time of college basketball where the transfer portal is so um, primarily used to build your roster, if there's a coach right now that has an advantage going into the next season through the portal is Kevin Keats because of what, what he was able to do prior to this season, bringing these seven new guys. And I think you're exactly right. There is probably a lot of players right now that if their season ended a little earlier than they expected it to, they were sitting there watching the NCAA tournament going, hmm, you know, this guy was able to do this, was able to throw these guys together before the season. Imagine what he can do next year with a guy like me. He now has multiple 20-win seasons. Again, there are different standards when it comes to the ACC, and we just saw the SEC's seismic move where John Calipari apparently is going from Kentucky to Arkansas, and there's a lot of pressure that comes with Kentucky, but we're talking about state right now. So where Kevin Keats walks in, and he takes them to three NCAA first rounds and now has taken this team to Final Four in his seventh year, and granted that seventh year involves the COVID year. So I think everybody gets a little bit of grace for the COVID year. It's just how it works out. This team, as it consists right now, and granted, they are losing the DJs. Yeah. They're losing at Casey Morsell, who is Mr. Passion, up and down. They will have to replace those guys. And then who knows? Again, we've seen stranger things. Last year, this team had all the right parts, right? Jack Clark all of a sudden hits the portal, goes to Clemson. Jack Clark, by the way, is back in the portal. Like he went back into the portal on Friday. It will The next few days will be very telling for this program. Who hits the portal, who stays, and then what comes in? Because you are now thinking about next season already. They're all going to watch the game tonight between Purdue and UConn because, listen, if you're going to lose, you're going to lose to the national champions, right? So you're going to lose to Purdue. That's what you hope it's Purdue. UConn, though, is playing unbelievable basketball. They've got a million guys with a million nicknames and whatnot. But the focus... That comes with NC State. And Kevin Keats should be like, I'm sure he's hugged him and thanked him and high-fived him and probably commissioned portraits of, of DJ Burns. DJ Burns, in the last three weeks, has made mid-six figures because of his personality and everyone noticing him. And the one thing they're noticing about DJ Burns is the fact that he's wearing a state uniform. He could have done this anywhere else. But he got lured here and he picked here. Don't forget, Paul McNeil, Trey Parker, a pair of four-star recruits, according to 247 Sports um, Composite Rankings, they'll make up NC State's 2024 recruiting class. They'll be freshmen, so they're going to go through. You know, they just got to get some experience under their belt playing the ACC. But McNeil, six foot six wing, and uh, Parker just being known for incredible athleticism, they'll be two guys to watch. I mean, they'll have big roles coming right out of the gate as they enter the program next year. Expectations, right? have just been raised a full, full million percent. Like that's, I was going to go, it's just been raised a notch. No, 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 no. You make a Final Four, now you got to run it back. you got to run it back. But you cannot exclude this team based on recent history 
from the rest of the conversation, especially what they've got coming back. Again, big week, big couple of weeks to start watching movement for sure.